Hi, welcome back to my channel. So today we continue Physics 1.5 Kisses M, Chapter 1, Forces and Motion 2, on topic 1.1, Resultant Force Part 2. So in this video, I will discuss the third learning standard, that is communicate on resultant force in various state of motion of an object. We have discussed earlier about resultant force. I hope you still remember what is meant by resultant force. So in this topic, we will discuss on resultant, resultant force on an object in various states of motion. So for this part, you must be able to sketch a free body diagram. What is a free body diagram? A free body diagram of an object is a diagram that shows all the forces acting on that object only. Look at situation 1. Object at rest or stationary. Example is a book uh, at rest on a table. How to draw a free body diagram? So you can see the, the book is at rest on the table. Of course, there will be gravitational force or known as weight directed downward. And also there's another force that balances the weight applied by the table on the book, we call it normal reaction force. The book is at rest, meaning forces are balanced. Or we can say resultant force equals to zero. So in this case, we can say R is equals to W. Okay, so this one is a free body diagram for a book which is at rest on the table. Second diagram, this is a bag, eh? a trolley bag on an inclined plane. It does not move in, just stay on the inclined plane. So you need to mark all the forces that act on the, on the bag, eh? not on the inclined plane, on the bag. So you want to draw a free a free body diagram for the back. So there is a weight vertically downward. So this is marked as W. And there is normal reaction force perpendicular to the surface. And there is normal reaction also from the wedge because we put something here. Okay. So these are the forces that act on the trolley bag. Okay, so we call it a free body diagram. Situation 2, object move with uniform velocity. As we discussed before, if object move with uniform velocity, acceleration is equals to 0. Look at this one. Okay, so this one is a lorry that pulling something at the back. Okay. So now we want to try to mark all the forces that act on the load here or the trailer at the back here. Okay. So there is weight of trailer downward, W. There is normal reaction because the wheel of the trailer is touching the ground. So there is a normal reaction force R upwards. Because of the trailer is moving, the ground is also applying frictional force. We mark as FR. What is frictional force? Frictional force is a force that always opposes the motion of an object. So this one, if the object is moving to the right, friction is left. Okay. As this example, the trailer, the lorry and the trailer is moving to the right direction here. So the frictional force normally marked at the ground is directed towards left, opposite direction. Okay. So when we talk about the object is moving with uniform velocity, we also can say that all forces are balanced. When all forces are balanced, meaning 
the vertical forces are balanced, the horizontal forces also balance. So you can see the vertical one, normal reaction force, is equal to weight of the trailer. And the pulling force or the thrust force also again, T is balanced by frictional force. So we can conclude that all forces are balanced, thus resultant force equals to zero. So this one is a free body diagram for the trailer. Okay. Okay, this one is a rocket moving upwards. You can see there's an engine thrust of rocket, weight of rocket downward, and air resistance U downward. If the rocket is moving with uniform velocity, what we can say about the forces that act on the rocket? Of course, the forces are balanced. The upward force balances the downward force. So you can see weight W and air resistance U are in the same direction. So the Total force downward is W plus U. And the force upward is the engine thrust is T. Thus, we can say that T is equal to W plus U. So the forces are balanced. Resultant force equals to zero. So for this case, object at rest, forces are balanced. Thus, resultant force equals to 0 newton. Same thing, object move with uniform velocity, forces also balance, resultant force equals to 0 newton. Now look at situation 3, where the object accelerates or decelerates. Example, the lorry and the trailer just now. Now accelerating towards the right. You can see the trailer is moving horizontally. Thus the forces that involve in the motion is all the horizontal component of the force. And the vertical part does not give effect to the motion. So what we can say about the relationship between the forces that act on the trailer? So the vertical part are balanced. Thus R equals to W. But for the horizontal part of forces, forces are not balanced. As we discussed earlier, direction of motion always follow the direction of larger force. In this case, if the trailer and the lorry is moving to the right, meaning the right direction of force is larger than the left direction of force. Or we can say T is larger than frictional force FR. So this one will cause the lorry and trailer to accelerate. In this case of the rocket, let's say now the rocket accelerate up with acceleration A. When accelerate up, meaning forces no longer balance or we can say unbalanced forces. Thus, it moves upwards so we can say the upward force is greater than the downward force. The total downward force is U plus W. Thus, T is greater than U plus W. So, in this case, we can see in the motion, the forces are unbalanced. For unbalanced forces, resultant force is not zero. So, we also can define resultant force or net force as a single force that causes an object to accelerate. So as you can see here, when there is resultant force, the object will accelerate.
in the case of decelerate for example braking force is applied the resultant force will be applied opposite to direction of motion this causes the velocity to decrease or x or decelerate okay so remember the definition of resultant force okay if forces are balanced resultant force is zero if unbalanced resultant force is not zero so actually resultant force f mass of the object m and acceleration a of the object are related by newton's second law of motion which is stated by the formula f equals to ma this one produced by isaac newton so you can read more about the this one how the newton second law is produced okay next we want to discuss more about newton's second law of motion what is stated by newton's second law of motion the acceleration of an object experiences is directly proportional to the applied force and inversely proportional to its mass so we can see there are two relationship here acceleration and force applied and acceleration and mass of the object or we can write down in form of formula force equals to mass time acceleration or f equals to me Force, the unit is Newton, mass kilogram, acceleration is meter per second squared. We can use the Newton second law to relate between acceleration and mass and also acceleration and force. Look at this picture. So you can see for this one, heavier objects require more force to accelerate. Lighter objects require less force to accelerate, meaning if apply same amount of force for these two objects, the heavier one will move with smaller acceleration. The lighter one will accelerate faster. Okay, because relationship between acceleration and mass is inversely proportional next we have same mass of object there are different amount of force applied this one is 20 newton force applied and this one is 10 newton so for the first one force applied 20 newton acceleration is 20 meter to the power negative 2 for the 10 newton acceleration is half 10 meter second negative 2 so meaning the larger the force applied the higher the acceleration this one is already stated by newton second law that is acceleration is directly proportional to applied force so this means that the top object will experience twice the acceleration of the bottom object or we can write in this form this symbol is for directly proportional so we can state as a is directly proportional to 1 over m or reciprocal of m or in other words we also can state as a is inversely proportional to mass of the object and this one a is directly proportional to force applied so in this case, the force applied that we use in the F equals to Ma actually is a resultant force. If there are more than one force act on the object, you need to calculate the resultant force. Because defined F here is a single force that produces acceleration A. If more than one force, we call it resultant force on the object. Okay, let's look at this one. You try to complete eh, the table. The first one, 
This is a drawn eh? state of motion, stationary on the ground. <coughs> Engine is switched off. Now we want to draw a free body diagram. Okay, we mark there are two forces because at rest eh? on the ground. So there is a gravity force W or weight and normal reaction R. Second diagram, move upwards with acceleration A. Okay, there is weight W. There is thrust upwards or lift force in this case because drawn is using the, you can see there's a lot of fan here. So it will produce lift force. Okay, so there's force upward. Okay, and then this one is the air resistant. Okay, this is not a free fall case. Huh? There is a drag or air resistance, denote as D. Okay, the third situation, move upwards with constant velocity. So there's a weight W. There is a leaf force. And also D. Okay, drag huh? or air resistance. Okay, now we want to uh, state uh, all here, the value here, acceleration, resultant force, and compare between forces. Look at the first one, acceleration for the first case. Stationary, of course, zero. Moving upwards with acceleration, so acceleration is A. Move upward with constant velocity, that's acceleration zero. For the first one, stationary, resultant force, zero. Move upwards, resultant force is equals to T minus W plus D. The downward one, you just add eh, because same direction. So there is resultant force, meaning F equals to T minus W plus D. And then the third one, constant velocity, there's uh, resultant force equals to zero because forces are balanced. Okay? And then comparison between forces, this one R equals to W. For the second one, T is greater than W plus D. This one, T equals W plus D. Okay, so for this part, you must be able to draw free body diagram and then identify a resultant force for various state of motion of an object. Okay, you can go and search more and do more revision on this so that you can understand better. I will stop here. I will continue in my next video, part 3, on problem solving. Okay, bye.